Hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today I want to share with you a technique that I like to use for sealing raw wood furniture that is in high traffic areas. So I love raw wood, I love the look of it more and more, I love how it coordinates with gold, with a soft gold, a metallic finish that I have on a lot of my decorations, it goes well with, with baskets and those kinds of things that are often used in my home and so I have a lot of raw wood and I'm getting more and more of it. Now it depends on where you're going to use your raw wood and the kind of traffic that it's going to have to endure. So. I have a shelf, it's a little, I think they call them tub caddies on my clawfoot tub and we just made that, it took us like 10 minutes to, to make. And it's raw wood, I just ended up using Miss Mustard Seeds hemp oil. And so if it's something that you aren't going to be using a lot of, I suggest using the hemp oil. I feel like it doesn't mess with the patina too much. So, and I'm, I'm really strict on how the colors turn out. I also use, I also use the hemp oil on my butcher block counter in my kitchen, which, you know, I don't prepare food on that, we don't eat on that, but I do want it to look warm and to repel some water, right? So once a year, I like to hemp oil that tub caddy and the, um, and the butcher block counter. Now, another thing I'll do, and I do this a lot on furniture, is I will just apply a clear coat wax. So on my French chairs and my white chairs that I redid, on the frame, I just I stripped off the stain and the sealer and ended up just getting it all sanded and beautiful, and I just put a clear coat wax on it, and that is enough because nothing really gets on, on the frame. Now, I... I, had, I did a post a while ago on how to strip painted furniture and I did a huge project. I stripped down all the paint on my church pew that I keep on my porch. And a lot of people ask like, how is that not getting ruined outside? How are you protecting it? Uh, I actually get that question quite a bit. And I ended up waxing it with a clear coat. I like the Annie Sloan clear coat. And I ended up doing that three times I think and I also when I redid my kitchen table same thing I ended up just putting a bunch of clear coat wax on it and honestly I'm not super happy with how that went so this week I'm addressing that with our dining room table and the the pew that I keep outside and it is on a covered porch but still um, it's just it stresses me out a little bit and there's like getting water I have some watermarks on it and stuff so so I wanted to take sealing raw wood to another level and explain that to you guys. So whatever you're starting with, you've got to figure out what was previously on it, trying to seal it, if it's not just bare wood. If it's bare wood, you can skip this part. Otherwise, you are going to want to um, get that other product off so that your, your clear coat is going to adhere. So we ended up using a product called TSP and it cuts wax and it get sort of grime and dirt and oils and things. So we put two tablespoons of TSP in a bucket with a gallon of warm water and just used a rag and just gently worked all over that wood table. I feel like it, it got a lot off. We started finding patches where it was thicker. Like we kept getting down at eye level and trying to find like where the wax was and then switched over to a little scrubby pad, did that for a little bit. And then I was like, I'm gonna use, a, this is a hack for you if you have like candle wax that gets spilt in your house. I decided to put down paper on the table and iron it with a hot iron. You gotta turn off the steam but it melts the wax and then it instantly gets soaked into that paper. Just to be sure you don't turn the paper over and iron that because then you're getting wax on your iron. And one thing that you can do to keep testing to see how much product is left is to just flick a little water on there and see if it beads up. And if it does bead up, you need to keep going. 
There are more products you could use. There's one that we got from Sherwin Williams and it's called Super Deck Revive and it's specifically for this reason, re removing old product so that you can then seal the wood again. They use it on decks. We use it on our church pew and it did do the trick. I didn't have any I didn't have any stain on this bench. If you're dealing with stain, leftover stain, there's also another product in that line that, that specifically will take the stain and sealer off. So that got us down to where we felt like we were getting to the actual raw wood. And, and then sometimes I would like just close my eyes and I could feel if there was any wax there. So it's a lot of guessing, but a lot of these steps will all together will work. And then you can always sand too. That brings us to the step where now the, it's been prepared and, and we let it dry. Then we're going to use a clear coat and we got ours at Home Depot. Okay. It's made by Olympic and it's spar urethane. It doesn't say it's a clear coat. It is oil based. My husband bought it. I'm trusting that he got the clear coat. <laughs> I do want to say though to get satin if you are a vintage decorator like I am I think satin is the truest softest look you're gonna get with and I, I say this with paint as well so high gloss kind of gives it away that it's that it's a newer newer item I feel like it makes it look more modern matte kind of looks dead and flat so the satin to me is is always a good way to go so once you get that product and you you just read the directions on the back, although I'll just tell you some of the stuff that I didn't read carefully. Do not shake the can. I like to shake my cans of paint. Do not shake this one because you're going to get little bubbles in your clear coat. So you want to open it up and stir it with a stir stick. And then I have such, I had a lot of painting to do, so I used a pretty good wide brush, like a three inch, and poured it into a little container to work in. Normally I just dip my brush right in the can, but for this one I actually had a little, it's by Wooster, W-O-O-S-T-E-R, little container that I could hold. Another thing you need to worry about when you're doing clear coat, it's not like painting. I am all about slopping the paint on and getting it spread out as best, you know, as smooth as I can. With clear coat you want to go as thin as you can. And if you think that you you want to dip your brush, try to get a little bit more out of that brush with a few more strokes. You also want to follow the lines of the grains in the wood. And it's clear, so it's really hard to see what you've done. So I had to keep like getting on eye level to see what was shiny and what wasn't. You want to paint, they say for stuff outside or that's high traffic, which both of these items are, they say uh, at least three coats. And you want to you want to plan for it to dry between like four and six hours. It's a nice hot day out, and it's um, a little breeze and everything, so it's drying in about four hours for me. But here's the mistake I made, and I can I can remedy it. But I did not read the part where you're supposed to sand in between each coat. I don't know why I didn't think that. But 220 grit sandpaper, and you want to just knock down the little rough edges. So now, once my stuff is dry for the third time, I'm gonna check and see if I if there are rough spots, and I can sand it down and touch it up. But technically, I should have been doing that in between, and now you know. Okay, so not too hard. You really need to know, again, what is the purpose of your raw wood piece? Is it high traffic? Is it outside? Is it not a big deal? Is it on the edge of a furniture, on a piece of furniture? Then it's no big deal. And I say skip the wax if you're dealing with a tabletop or you're dealing with anything that's gonna be, you know, outside. So hopefully that helps answer some questions. I feel like this post is a long time coming. People have been asking me. And so I finally have the answer for you and you can not uh, make mistakes with 
water stains and things on tabletops that you are not counting on. Okay, before you head out, go ahead and check out the link below if you aren't already part of my subscriber library. I have, I keep all of my printables in there. I've got tutorials, some eBooks, a bunch of stuff that if you are the DIY decorator, I think you will really enjoy. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I do post regularly and I share my DIY design advice in our vintage farm life. All right, take care and I'll talk to you soon.